working with characters was amazing. But there were a lot of little tricks that we did too to help make the experiences they had with guests even better. Yeah, we knew how to turn the characters into rock stars. <laughs> As a photographer at Walt Disney World, there's a number of places you can be taking pictures of guests. Many times it's out on the streets where you're taking pictures of them in front of the castle or spaceship Earth. And during those kinds of encounters, the whole idea is to make it memorable for the guest to let them feel like rock stars, to get great photos of them. Working with characters, on the other hand, was a little bit different. Yes, the focus was still on the guests, but it was also on the character. Instead of us kind of being a focus point to direct, instead we pointed everything to the character and let them kind of take over. In fact, that was actually one of the big differences between an okay photographer, or a not good one, and a great one, was how involved they were and what kind of involvement they had. See, with the character of meet and greet, everything is about that character. And anytime a photographer detracts from the character, it detracts from that meet and greet and it ruins it. It's one of those reasons why as a photographer, you learned early on not to count. And in fact, when I would see photographers count, you would drive me nuts. Okay, everybody, one, two, three. No. <laughs> one, it takes too long. Two, it's distracting. Three, it makes you the center of attention instead of the character. You should be able to shoot quick. The faster you're able to shoot, you know, get them post. Okay, everybody, your camera, Mickey's camera, boom, boom. Just that quick, literally. It shouldn't take long, and if you're counting, um, you're gonna get in trouble kinda quickly. Don't waste that time. Get your focus on real quick, get set up ahead of time, and go. Uh, that would be one way to get the characters upset at you, because it would take so much. And it would detract from the characters. Again, your job as a photographer is to point people to them. You make the character the rock star, not you. At best, you're kind of a fan trying to help the other fans enjoy that encounter. That's really kind of your role while you get the pictures. It would mean running the line effectively, but it would also mean finding ways to enhance that character's ability to meet the guests and bring their personality out. Sometimes the characters were awesome on their own. Face characters in particular had it easy. I mean, if, for example, you were shooting pictures of the Mad Hatter, you didn't have to do anything except just stand back and get the photos because he was gonna go. The princesses directed everything themselves for the most part, and you would just help the line a little bit and get the pictures. Those were easy, but there were times that you did have to help, especially with the fur characters that couldn't talk. Chip and Dale, it was so much easier for them if you could point out little ways that they could cause a little bit of mischief. Help them take things or blame them for stuff. Anything you could do, you didn't want to coach them. Okay, this was a big thing that some photographers tried to do is they would try to coach the characters and tell the characters what to do. No, 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 you don't do that. You just give them an opportunity to do something if they want to do it. So, for example, Donald Duck kind of had a rivalry with Mickey. And sometimes he would be in an honorary mood and not like Mickey at all because Donald Duck is number one. Go check out his autograph. He even writes that. And so if we wanted to, and we kind of wanted to rile him up a little bit, we might point out somebody's Mickey ears or their Mickey pen and things like that, and give Donald an opportunity, if he so desired, to respond and react to that. And maybe toss aside the Mickey pen and insist on a regular one, or to remove their ears. Or if Donald wanted to be in a good mood, he may just encourage them and applaud it or something. It gave them an opportunity to feed off of that and kind of go where they wanted. Another example would be Minnie. Minnie is a little bit of a flirt especially if Mickey's not around. And so if we saw an opportunity to, hey, yo, Minnie, check out this dude. Minnie could then take the hint and she could flirt with him if she wanted to, or she didn't have to. She'd just be nice. We like to play that kind of up a little bit with Mickey and Minnie when they were together, especially if we had an engaged couple or newlyweds. You know, hey, Mickey, when are you going to give Minnie a ring? And this was kind of an ongoing gag that we did. But there were times that they didn't necessarily want to do that. But hey, Mickey, when are you going to give Minnie a ring? Soon, <laughs> you know, and get a thumbs up. 
okay, we get the hint. Let's move on to something else. And that was the whole deal, was not to make us the center, but to help direct the center of attention to the characters so that it enhanced the experience with the guest. Other good examples, the few times I got to work with the fairies. I liked working with Vidya. Vidya was amazing. If you don't know who Vidya is, she's the purple fairy. She's the wind fairy. Vidya liked to fly around the room with the kids, which meant running in circles and stuff. Vidya was also sarcastic. She's not a villain, but she definitely had a little bit of a wit to her. It was fun to play that up, and you might see something happening at Tinkerbell, because we were all in the same room, and you'd see somebody having a good time, and, hey, Vidya, do you see what they're doing over there with Tink? And give Vidya an opportunity to look at what was happening, and then when they got to her, kind of respond with, well, I saw what you did over there. Now, what are you going to... Helping provide an opportunity and opening. Another good example is Vidya would sometimes blow a gust of wind. And depending upon where I was as a photographer with her, if I was standing up, I would make sure that I took a few steps back, like I was getting blown by a gust of wind. If I was on my knees, I would literally roll over backwards. Because, after all, if you get a strong gust of wind, it's going to knock you over. All in an effort to enhance who she is and what was going on. And I'll tell you, my videos loved me the few times I got to work with them. Just because of simple things like that. Some photographers, a lot of photographers, would ignore things like that. Yeah, okay, gust of wind, I'm still taking pictures. Do what you can to make that character look even better and cooler and alive. I loved being able to do that with my characters. One more example is Pluto. Pluto's a puppy dog. There's all sorts of ways you can enhance and make Pluto much more fun. If we kept a ball around, Pluto could bat the ball around or fetch. If you had kids that were nervous of the characters, which did happen quite a bit, Pluto was a great one to meet because Pluto would be sitting down like a dog does. He could get the kids to sometimes reach up. Don't do this without being invited and offered. But we could get the kids sometimes to gently pet Pluto's nose or pet him on the back like they would a regular dog. And, oh, he's just a big puppy. And it would help them get over their fear. The other thing that Pluto would do, and a lot of them, is play with toys that the kids brought in. Little boys especially would bring in cars, toy cars of some sort. And you could encourage the characters, if this kid is a little bit nervous and scared, Mickey, he's got a toy car over there. And you'd watch the characters get down the floor and play cars with the kids. Just something simple like, okay, what can I see this family is doing that I can point out to the character and help them? And that was another thing we did is, I like to listen to my line, to what people were saying, what they were talking about. If I had a pause in between groups, I'd talk to them briefly, kind of skimming them, scanning, seeing what was going on, what their interests were, and then being able to mention those things. Hey, you know, so-and-so, do you know that they're from such-and-such such place? Or that they've done this? You know, I just heard that she just graduated from high school. Little things like that that you could mention to the character that the character could then react and respond to. And it made it so much better. Not putting me at the center, but putting them there. That was one of the coolest things about working at Disney, was finding all these ways to make the characters not just as cool as they already were, but helping them to be even cooler. To make them the celebrity, the rock star that everybody knew already that they were, but to help them become even more that. And I absolutely love that. That was one of the coolest parts of the job. So do you have stories like that where not only did you meet a character or somebody famous, but somebody helped make it even better? I'd love to hear it. Share it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And check that description below as well. There's a ton of info there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons and supporters. I've actually got a very special message for them coming up too. So thank you so much. God bless. As I close this video, um, I do want to end with a little bit of a, a special message. You may have seen my video uh, last week where I talked about a couple issues I'd had, and um, one of my supporters had quit, had done so not so nicely, um, because I didn't talk political and stuff. Uh, it was a video that I filmed on a down day, which happens, uh, especially... Which happens. Okay, let's leave it there. Which happens. It happens to all of us sometimes. And I want to say first, thank you to everybody who sent kind words, posted messages of encouragement. Uh, honestly, all of you watching the videos blew me away. And I sat there the day I published that video and for the next two days because there were so many responses. And 
I've cried a number of times in gratitude. Uh, so thank you to everybody who replied. There was one other thing that I fully did not expect, and that was this huge groundswell of uh, financial support. I had several people that sent me gifts through PayPal, which shocked me. Wasn't expecting that. I've sent them thank you notes. Uh, so, and again, if you were one of those, thank you so much. I wasn't expecting that. I also was not expecting um, a huge number of new patrons and supporters that I, I honestly, it, it blew me away. And it is a long list. Uh, believe it or not, I've got 13 names here, I believe, from two days. So here is all of my new patrons. If you want to know about some, the financial support, check the links below. They get perks, uh, behind the scenes access, and more gratitude than you will ever know uh, from all this. So it is a long list. I'm going to try to cover all of these here because there's a bunch. Uh, there is Chandra Walker, Ryan Hudson, James Bruin, Jasper DeGroot, Teresa Caracella, Lucy Fitz, Roundelay, I hope I'm saying that one right, Jody Cake, I love that name, <laughs> Arena Dirks, Krishna Ramarju, Robert Pincus, Rick Pennington, Leroy Kelly, Derek Anderson. On YouTube memberships, I want to welcome Black Loki. And then I've got one that went above and beyond, and that's Gary Stevens, who signed on to both Patreon and YouTube. Uh, honestly, thank you so much to all of you for signing on. Uh, it really... To everybody that sent words, sent encouragement, sent other things, thank you. Um, I do this as fun. I do it as a hobby. And there's times sometimes just in life when people respond weird and you go, well, why am I doing this? And it's days like that and responses like that that say, yep, that's why. I know a lot of you say that I bless you, but you really, really blessed me. So thank you to everybody who watches. Thank you to those who commented. Thank you to my new patrons and supporters. It means the world to me. It really does. And I can't, can't even tell you enough how much I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Working with characters, on the other hand, and we took on a little bit of a different role. Come on, people. All right, I'm not sure what that was. I'll look later. Another example. Mini, for ex How? 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 Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know about contact information, fan pages, merchandise, and more, please be sure to check the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to know when I have new ones, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button right up there. And if you want to see another one of my videos, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And a huge thank you to these wonderful people here who support me on Patreon and with YouTube memberships. They get behind the scenes information, special perks, and more. If you'd like to know more about that, well, make sure you check that button right there. Thank you so much.